guys, oh my god, it is long overdue, but my laptop has not been cooperating with this video. Good, goodness gracious me, it is it has been a rough ride. But it's time for the day two in Japan vlog. Um, I need to find some way of getting these out faster so I can finish the vlogs from this trip because this, this ain't cool. But yes, I'm going to take you along with me on day two in Japan. And this was a super, super lovely day. I think if you think of day one as like, sort of like more modern history and such, day two was all about like traditional stuff and nature, I find. Like there was just so much cool stuff that we did and just we saw so much beautiful nature and it made me so happy. But the first thing we did when we woke up in the morning was we actually went to the penguin aquarium in Nagasaki. This is the face of someone who is still very, very tired. Uh, we are about to leave now. I've got like a polo neck under here because it was like so cold yesterday I nearly died. Uh, we're about to leave. We're just packing everything up. This is the second day in a row that we have not had time to go get breakfast. Which I'm sad about because I am actually super super hungry. Um, but yeah, there's lots of fun stuff today. We're going to see penguins and I am so excited to see the penguins. But I need to find some way to eat first because I am dying and I'm tired and it's going to be cold. Ooh. But you know, I'll see the penguins and all misery in life will disappear and everything will be joyous and it will be great. And uh, the aquarium was actually in a really, really like beautiful little place. So it was just nice, even just the walk up to the front of the aquarium was lovely. super fun we actually got to uh, try on they had like penguin kigurumis there for people to wear and take pictures in so we got there we did that and it was, <laughs> they have penguin kigurumis that you can wear <laughs> <laughs> And we go the end. Oh, okay. And uh, it's not a restaurant. We, 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 we don't have a restaurant. I know. I know. on his back. What? <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> oh, my little friend! <laughs> oh, Ooh, look at these grumpy fellas! Oh my goodness, hello! 
Skipper guys, there's little fish that come out of water. Hold on, you little like these guys are huge. Hold on, look, he's a big, big fish. Whoa. He's having a look at us. Hello, friend. You are so handsome. Yes, you are. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. The way they walk is so fun. I like this fluffy guy. Hold on. Nice sleek coat. Fluffy messy coat. Tag yourself. I'm fluffy messy coat. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. I know. <laughs> What'd you do? What'd you do? Oh. Mm. They're moving. I wonder if they're mating. Having a creepy little baby. Oh. Look at them go. As well as the penguins, they had like loads and loads of different just cool sea animals that was really amazing to look at. And then, <laughs> I've never had to use my willpower more in my life, guys. There was like a part where there was like the glass, you know, was only like this high or so. And there was like a little sign that said, do not touch the penguins. But like, so this is like, you know, where the glass ends, like, you know, glass comes up, ends here. There was a penguin sitting on a rock, like here, like 100% within my reach right there and sitting right by the side and was like do not pe touch the penguins but he was right there and I <sighs> I've never had to use more willpower than that moment trying not to pat his cute little head I was like oh hello and he was like look at I he probably wanted to bite my finger honestly I would have let him I wouldn't have cared if I got bit it would have been worth it to pit pat that cute little penguin head so yeah that nearly killed me <laughs> trying not to <laughs> he was so cute and I like I was honestly like having quite an internal struggle. I was just there like <laughs> So there was that. Hey. 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 Oh 
You're not allowed to touch them, but he's like right there and it's torture. I would give you a pit pat if I were allowed. A little screech. <laughs> so after the penguin aquarium, it was actually time to head off to Nagasaki. Uh, thankfully we managed to grab some takoyaki from the aquarium before we left to bring on the bus, so that made up for the lack of breakfast because we were starving and it was so so yummy. And uh, yeah, we went on the nice drive to Saga, so that... Did I say that? Did I say Nagasaki or Saga before? We were driving from Nagasaki to Saga. Yeah, and it was a really, really lovely drive there. And uh, we got to the place we were going and it was just beautiful. It was this lovely little sort of town just in the middle of a, just like a valley basically of just forests of trees and hills. I'm actually just gonna play some drone shots of the place we were in while I sit and talk to you guys about this for a moment because you need to see the beauty of where we were. It was just so gorgeous and breathtaking and I was just blown away by it. There's just so many mountains everywhere and it was amazing and it was just so quiet and there's this really really big lovely beautiful graveyard. Um, I didn't go around filming the graveyard because I did ask our tour guides while there if in Japan it would be weird for tourists to do that and they said yeah, kind of. <laughs> I explained how in England and stuff, you know, like a lot of graveyards actually are a tourist attraction. Apparently they don't really do that in Japan. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I won't film the graveyard. Um, I did walk up through it to get to the forest that was above it and um, it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, but yeah, so our first stop was actually to have lunch and it was in this really lovely, like very, very traditional setting. And uh, the food was served in like little sort of ceramic uh, bento boxes that were actually made there because Saga is really famous for its pottery and ceramics. And we got to go see more of that later in the day. But uh, first we had lunch there and just like the presentation of everything was so wonderful and pretty. Like it, you almost didn't want to eat it because it was just so nice. Like the way everything was set out. It was all so yummy. There was only one or two things that I wasn't super fond of and it was more just to do with texture than taste, but most of it was just absolutely delicious. And uh, what was actually really cool was because of the season that we were there, we got to eat new rice, which um, apparently in Japan is a really big thing because it's when the rice is harvested. So it's rice that's never actually being dried or anything. It's just like new fresh rice. And uh, that was really tasty and uh, yeah, we just really, really enjoyed that lunch. After that, we went out for a little walk around the village and visited one of the local ceramic stores to look at some of the stuff that's made locally. And it was all super beautiful. I was so nervous in there because I am the clumsiest person in the world. I am just a big hulking mess of a clumsy human being. So being in places with lots of breakable things is absolutely nerve wracking. Uh, but we had a look around and everything was super, super pretty. And uh, after that we took a little break just to uh, get the drone shots that I showed you before and have a little look around. And then just outside the graveyard, Jake and I spotted this spider. I think I like spotted it first and I was like, oh my god, like it was... I kind of freaked out because of how cool it was. <gasps> look at that spider! Oh, <gasps> uh, look at the, look at the spider! This would be the spider. Damn it, phone, please. Hi, don't worry. You can see more of... Yeah, we don't have this kind where we're from. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, it's a spider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not poisonous, so it's okay. Oh, I wonder if they can bite. The uh, people who were showing us around, I think, found it a bit, <laughs> a bit weird that we got so excited by the spiders because, like, they're common there. So in Japan, they don't care about them. You know, it'd be like someone over here getting excited about a housefly, basically. But I'd never seen anything like that in person. Um, they're a type of orb weaver spider, I believe, called uh, Joro spiders. I think, like J O R O spiders. And uh, yeah, they're just so cool. And we actually ended up finding loads of these throughout our trip. We saw loads in Korea as well. And every time we got excited and every time the people who were with us were like, okay. 
<laughs> but I just thought they were so, so beautiful and so cool. And like while I was walking up through the graveyard to get to the forest, they were just everywhere. Like between all the gravestones, there were just these massive webs with these huge, big, colorful spiders in them. And I was like, <gasps> I nearly walked face first into one because I was trying to get a picture of one spider and I couldn't quite reach it. So I like tried to move around like this. So like I turned to try to step over something. And as I turned around, <laughs> it was like there. And I was like, Okay, they're pretty, but I don't want them on my face. So <laughs> yeah, so I'm sorry. I've spent too long talking about spiders. I was very excited about the spiders. And uh, then after that, we actually got to go to one of the places that makes all the ceramics. We got to go visit the kiln. And this was actually so much more interesting than I expected it to be. We actually got to go in and just see all these people making everything and working on it and painting it. And just the amount of like detail and really like delicate craftsmanship that goes into it was just really really cool to see like especially watching them paint i was so so interested in started here in this place 150 years ago oh wow the, kono, kono tatemono wa sono mamma. so this building itself is the original one that means 150 you know after that they burn the biscuit mm. with the temperature of 900 degree mm. and it will be dried so much and it absorbs uh, the water. I asked the reason why she's <laughs> using the uh, bigger brush. Yeah. Mm. Ah, so if she, uses, you know, she uses the very thin one, mm. she has to change a lot of brush. Uh, you know, absorb a uh, uh. lot of water. Uh. Ah. Yeah. So, as I said, the 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 uh, and also, uh, it is so uh, it's iron, minerals, you, mm -hmm. you know, so the minerals, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's heavy, yeah. so she has to stir all the time, that, that's why. So she needs the important to even the color of the color should be even, so mm -hmm. the bigger one is better. Uh, but yeah, so we got to see everyone actually making all the pieces and then we went in and saw the kiln itself and uh, actually got to go inside it. But obviously it wasn't turned on and we got to look around inside and it's really cool because all the walls are really uh, like, uh, the walls and ceiling and everything are super super glossy because this is one of the only kilns left using a wood burning fire instead of gas which actually takes like a lot longer, like it t takes longer to fire everything but it's like a more traditional way of doing it so that was really cool to see. But apparently um, the ash from the wood like has a reaction with the brick that the kiln's made out of and that's why it's all like glossed over and stuff so that was really cool to see. And once all that was done we got to go out and actually then see all the pieces that had been made in that kiln like in their own store and that was like it's so cool it's all like super expensive it's all like really high craftsmanship like you know like expensive stuff uh, so again I was terrified. Uh, but yeah, it was all beautiful and it's actually super fun to see and I actually followed them on Instagram. So yeah, it was actually way more fun than I ever expected. So after all of that, my goodness, it was a busy day. Uh, we got to go out to this really, really beautiful like uh, forest park, park type place. And I believe it's famous for it has like at night during the summer, like some sort of light display over the lake. I, don't, I didn't fully catch what happens, but um, we were told a little bit about that. Also, we didn't see because we were there during the day in the autumn. And uh, yeah, but it, we did not need to see that because we were there in the autumn and everything was so beautiful. Like the just all the colors that we saw, there's acorns everywhere, there's more spiders, <laughs> which I was excited about. And it was just the most beautiful place. It was just so nice to walk around. Jake and I got some time to just kind of wander off on our own and just you know, he got some drone shots, got to look at some stuff. We found this really beautiful little shrine, like right up at the very top of all the hills, like in between some rocks. And that was so, so cool to see. And uh, yeah, it was just a really amazing day out in the forest. So I just want to show you some of that.
So once we got done with that, we went to our hotel, which was a Japanese inn style hotel, which is really cool. So all the um, staff were wearing uh, yukata and we actually got some yukata as well because there was an onsen there. Uh, so we checked in and uh, put our stuff in our rooms. Again, we had two rooms and uh, Jake managed to get a really lovely time lapse of the sun setting and the rooms were like huge and so comfortable. So that was really, really nice. And uh, after a little while of settling in and stuff, we went down and met everyone for dinner. And I think that dinner was one of my favorites. Again, it was all like quite uh, traditional style, like the room and everything. And it was like really nice long chat with everyone. We just got to sit around and talk and eat. And it was just so, so nice. All the food was great. We could hear it because like, you know, it was different little rooms and we all had our own room, but in one of the other rooms, I think, I can't remember how many people it was, but I think it was like 50 Japanese businessmen who were down from, I can't remember, Fukushima or something maybe? It was a bunch of businessmen anyway who were down sort of on a little like company trip or something. And um, we could hear them in one of the other rooms and they were all super drunk and singing karaoke. And it was so, so funny to like just to hear through the walls. So it was just nice to hear everyone around kind of having a really great time as well. And uh, we got to try like Japanese like hot pot type thing, which is the type of food I've always wanted to try where you actually like cook the meat and stuff and the vegetables yourself. And after dinner, we were surprised with a geisha performance. And that was just like so cool. I'd never got to see anything like that. I think, I think her name was Mebi Cha Cha. I think that's what she said. I, I can't fully remember, but she um, gave us this performance. And it was really cool. And she talked to us for a while afterwards and everything. And it was just so amazing to see. I filmed loads of it. I've tried not to like make it too long in here, but I do want to show you guys. So I've got the clips of that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, she was super lovely. It was just a really nice surprise. And then at the very end of the night, the last thing we did, which I don't have video footage of, but you'll understand when I explain what it is, uh, we couldn't go into the actual onsen there at the inn because most, there are some places in Japan, but most onsen in Japan don't allow people with tattoos in. 
and like I have a couple but Jake has quite a lot it, so we weren't able to uh, do that but there was actually a private onsen and they rented that for us so me and Jake could just go there which I kind of liked more anyway because I'm not used to being naked in front of strangers so honestly I wouldn't have been super keen on the public onsen anyway because you can't wear a bathing suit or anything it's like a, a big like sort of bathhouse type thing and like I said, I'm just, I'm not typically naked in front of strangers and I, it would have just been women, but still I was just like, I don't know if I could handle that. So uh, me and Jake got our own little private one and it was just so, so nice. We just got to sit and relax and the water was like super warm. I think I fell asleep at one point. I was just like so comfy, just kind of like floating away in the water. I think I drifted off to sleep at one point, which probably isn't a good idea, but it was so nice and relaxing, especially after such a long, heavy day of just like, you know, looking around everything. It was so nice to just sit and chill. And I had such a good sleep that night, so that was really, really enjoyable. As, again, there's no video footage of that because we were naked. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really, really cool anyway, so I very, very much enjoyed that. So, this video is probably about three years long. I hope I managed to remember everything. Um, I didn't get as much footage myself this day because I wasn't able to charge my camera the night before because we just did not have enough power outlets in the previous hotel room, unfortunately. So my poor little camera got neglected. Uh, so I had to borrow a lot of footage that Jake got and then obviously put it together with some of the stuff that I managed to get and some of the stuff on my phone. This was a very hard video to edit, but I hope I included everything. <laughs> so since this was such a very hard video, I was just like going through my laptop so I can remember everything. Um, this is a very hard video to put together, so please leave a comment, validate my suffering. <laughs> Um, of the editing, obviously not of the trip. The trip was amazing. I miss it so much. I really want to go back to Japan. I had such a good time and it was so upsetting the next morning having to leave everyone. I really miss all the people who took us around. Everyone was just so friendly and welcoming and nice. And again, this trip was just one of the best experiences of my life. So be sure to tune into the next vlog whenever I get that up. I will try not to have it be such a huge amount of time the next time, but we all know I suck, so who knows? Uh, but tomorrow, <laughs> in the next vlog, the day after this, in the next vlog, is when we go to Korea. So tune in for that whenever it comes up. Keep an eye on the channel. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and also check out my Patreon, because it supports me and this channel more than anything in this world. So thank you so much to those who do already support me on there. So come and join the family and make some new friends. Alrighty, I'm a go. I love you all very much. Bye!